Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. If you mostly build and code alone, not in a team dynamic, or sometimes even in a team dynamic, most of the time we struggle with few things. One of them is debugging, and second one is optimizing code. And sometimes even understanding some online code to get incorporated in our solution. Today, I'm going to walk through how we can use ChatGPT as our personal coding assistant or a development buddy to make our c -sharp development faster and more efficient. So let's run into a few examples. Now here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep the examples to be simple and trivial, though you can extrapolate those to much more complex problems. So in general, ChatGPT can assist us in multiple ways. It can explain a complex c -sharp concept. It can help debug our error, suggest performance improvement, generate boilerplate code, and even write unit test. So let me show you some of the practical example. I'll start with a simple error. So let's create an array of integers. And then for the integers, if we do console.writeLine of five, it is going to generate index out of range exception because we have five item which starts from zero as index and we are giving an index of five which is the sixth item and this is going to generate an error as expected and we can see unhandled exception index out of range exception so it clearly says that index outside of bounds of the array. So here, how we can use ChatGPT is we can just copy this code, then open up ChatGPT and just paste this error and enter. So here, as you can see, it says the error you are encountering system index out of range exception typically occurs when you try to access an element in an array using an index that is either negative or exceeds the array. And it shows, for example, this. This is an invalid exception or invalid index. So you can loop through this. This will also throw an exception. So it goes through the whole concept practically to show how to use the index properly. So it is not only solving the problem that you have, explaining what it is, it is also showing some best practices on how to use indexes. Now, especially this one, dynamic array and list issues. If you're dynamically adding or removing elements from an array or list, ensure that the size is correctly managed and you are not accessing out of bounds indexes after such modifications. The solution is check the array or list size after modifying it, especially if you're doing operations like remove, add, or clear. So this is very informative. And in debugging step also it is providing check the index being used when accessing an array. Use try catch to handle potential exception gracefully and print log the length of the array and the index identifying discrepancies. So this is pretty useful feedback from ChatGPT. So now here I can delete this and let's look into another example. Here I'm going to create a simple loop that calculates the sum of the array. So what I can do is I can say sum is equal to zero and then for INTI is equal to zero and then i less than number dot length i plus plus and then i can say sum is equal to or sum plus equal to numbers of i and then console dot write line of sum so let's take a print and it is giving 15. 
Now what I can do is I can ask ChatGPT how I can optimize this code. Go here and say, optimize this code and paste it. And now it shows, well, you can optimize this code just using the numbers.sum. Alternative for each is another option. And for each loop and sum both has O of N operation. It's talking about performance consideration. And then in terms of performance, both are roughly equivalent for this use case. The key difference is the style preference. So now if we go back, we can just change it to sum is equal to numbers.sum and that's pretty much it. If we run, we'll get the exact same response, which is 15. Now let's take another example. Let's say we need to generate a boilerplate code like a basic C sharp class with properties and method instead of writing it manually. So we can go and ask the same thing to chat GPT. So here we can go back and we say, okay, generate a C sharp class for car. Let's give car as capital C with properties for make, model, and year, and a method to dis display these details. And now it is creating a car class with make model in here is three properties and then a constructor to take these three and then display is just doing a console.write and even it is showing how we can use it in the code and it's showing all the things and it explains what the properties are what the constructor is doing and displaying it now one thing the constructor is a normal constructor it is not suggesting inline constructor it's because probably it is trained on the previous version of C sharp and not the latest one where primary constructor is supported. But beside the case, it is providing a complete solution of this particular code in terms of how we can use it. Now let's look into, let's say we copied and pasted this particular code and ran it, which we can do, we can just copy this, go here and just run it. It should work and just run this and we can see card detail 2020 Toyota Corolla as expected. Now the goal for us is to write unit test. So if we have to write unit test, what we can do is, and as you know, unit tests are extremely important. And at the same time, they're tedious to write. So what we can do is we can ask ChatGPT to do that for us. And this is where I think I personally say most of the time on a day-to-day -day basis. So write a unit test case for car class. Display details method. Consider all possible boundary conditions and exceptions. And now it is going, it's putting the thought process of what all test cases it's going to write. So scenario is valid input, empty string input, invalid year input, null check. So let's look into the test cases that it created now. So first thing it is doing is a helper method to capture console output. Let's look into what is the detail for that. So it says this helper method captures what's written in the console using the console.setout. It allows us to test console-based output. Now the reason for that, if you remember, let's go back to the code. In the code, the display is writing into a console. So if it writes into a console, it's very hard to, because it's not returning anything, it's very hard to do a test. So for that, what it is doing is, it is 
setting out the console output, which is the string writer, calling the action, action in this case, for example, when you are testing this, the action is basically calling the display. So it will call it, which will capture the output from the console, and then it is just doing console output dot two string dot trim, which is returned so that the output can be compared with the string here, because this method does not return an output itself. Hence, it has to do this. So here you can see how intelligent it is, understanding how to even do that. And then it has written a valid test, an empty, few empty test cases, then invalid year test cases, null input test cases, zero input test cases. So it has done all of them. And at that point, we can just copy paste this and run it. But for running it, I'll have to create a test project. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new test project. So I have this test project, test project one. I'm just going to copy paste the test cases from the chat GPT and in the dependencies, I'm just going to add my demo app so that I can have all the error taken care of. Now, since all the errors are taken care of, let's go into the test explorer, which should accept this as a test and let's run all tests. And once we run all tests, it should show up the responses as expected. Let's go through it. And some of the test cases are failing, but this is where, even though there are few test cases failed, it is still significant amount of improvement in terms of the work that we can do. So for here example, it is expecting a space because we have a space here and there we don't have a space. So we can essentially, why we don't have a space? Because we did a trim. We did a trim of the console output. So we need the trim to be there because it's going to also take away the new line character and whatnot because it's console dot if you remember the code, it is console dot write line, not write. So it is writing and doing a new line. Hence we need the trim. But we can go ahead and modify the code which are failing. For example, we can modify this, get rid of the space because we know the last one will be an empty space. And we can again rerun and out of the four failure, one should be successful now. And we can see one of them got success. Now let's fix this one also, and we should get two of the tests successful, and so on and so forth. We can fix this, and this one is successful. So this goes to show you how powerful ChatGPT can be for C Sharp developers. It can help debug errors, optimize code, generate classes, and even write unit test all in a few seconds. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed to it. And thanks so much for watching this video.